Betty and Miss Bonnie had a lot in common. First, their love for this institution, for UNC Charlotte, but more importantly, for the people, for the faculty, for the staff, and especially the students. And Betty made an impact, I think, on all of us, especially if you were an alumni president or past president, she impacted our lives in many ways. She was compassionate and cared about us, not only as individuals, but cared about our families. She never forgot a name. So when you visited with Betty, when you talked to Betty, you were automatically talking to someone who was a friend. And with Betty, it was never an aggravation. She connected people. She'd say, oh, by the way, so-and-so was on campus for a meeting, and I told him as a past president that you'd reach out to him about a poss possibility of being a, a board member. So she was always connecting people. This university environment and alumni association, they were perfect places for her to go exercise those mothering instincts. And boy, did she do it so well and to the benefit of many. Uh, she certainly didn't like the spotlight and did much of her best work quietly and so meaningfully behind the scenes, like a mother would. And she'd let you know what was on her mind and she could either do it with her sense of humor or, or, or fairly matter-of-factly. And I preferred the former, of course, because it did not make me feel like I was in quite as much trouble. You always knew what Betty was thinking because she would tell you, not in a bad way, but she was truthful and honest and if she had something to say, she was going to say it. Every time I came here and I'd go up to, see, up to her office, she'd say, sit down, we got to talk, young man. And uh, I'd say, well, what do I do now? And it was always in that motherly voice. I actually thought in my heart of hearts that she could have been my second or third mother or my aunt. That was across the board, like she truly cared about, about us as people. We all thought Betty would live forever. <laughs> and it was truly in the last couple of weeks when she really got sick that we were thinking, how could we continue her legacy? And Misty said, Mark, what, what, do you, what can we do? You're in development. I said, well, we ought to establish a scholarship in her name. We set out a challenge to the past presidents with a couple of lead gifts, and within less than 48 hours, we had the money needed to endow a scholarship. And I'm sure that everybody on that mailer uh, responded as quickly as they could. It's not something you, you thought about. You knew it was the right thing to do, and you did it as quickly as you could. I was just so thrilled with the, with the turnout. And that's one way to rally the troops, so to speak. But the name Betty Stansel brought all of us together. And it always kept us together. And now it can't keep us apart. And we were able to tell Betty that we endowed the scholarship before she passed away. And I'll never forget the day we told her. And I haven't known Betty to be at a loss for words. But that day she was. And she, she, all she could say is, you did this for me, and thank you. That's how much Betty meant to us. So I went in to see Betty, and I said, Betty, I'm so happy. I'm sure Misty shared the news with you. I'm so happy that the past presidents and many other alumni have come through to endow your scholarship over $25,000. And she grabbed my hand and she said, you're a good boy. <laughs> and, and I lost it, you know. And I, I knew when she was sick, but she never let that be a, a physical part. She never showed that. And she never let on to it. Uh, she always wanted to make you feel good, whether she felt good or not. The last time that, that I saw Betty, um, you know, you don't really know what to expect when you walk in. And so I walked in thinking what I was going to say. And the first thing she looked up, she opened her eyes and she said, it's about time for you to get a haircut, isn't it? When I went in to see her, the first thing out of her mouth was, Dennis, don't think that I've forgotten that you still owe me lunch. And she delivered that with a grin that made me smile. And it, that was the last thing that I thought I might hear at a moment like that. So Betty's sense of humor lives on 
And I know that my first lunch date in heaven will be with Miss Betty Stansel. As long as most of us have known Betty, we've always considered her an honorary alumna. And now it will be official. I wish we could have told her before she passed away, but I know she knows it because I know she's looking down on us, um, offering advice, um, but saying, job well done, thank you.